Hi and welcome to another video from the Intelligent Auto Channel. Today we have this 2012 Kia Sorento, I believe. It's a 2.2 CRDI and the customer complaint is that very intermittently it will cut out when he pulls away from traffic lights or junctions. I've used this car for a couple of days uh, to try and replicate the fault and I can't replicate it. It will not do it for me. So we all hate intermittents, but at the end of the day, I still need to take a look at this car to see if I can find anything which may be contributing towards his complaint. So first of all, we're going to look at some scan data. So here we are, we're connected to the engine control on the vehicle. Um, and just to check, there's no fault codes detected. Like I said, I've been using this car for a couple of days. Um, and what I did was I hooked the scan tool up, sat it on the dashboard while I used it um, just to come to work and back from home. Um, one thing I did notice was um, when the engine was warmed up, the fuel rail pressure started deviating, should we say. Um, all the rest of the data looked okay. Um, so let's get the fuel pressure up on screen. I'll now start the vehicle up. So what we have here is, uh, we have the fuel pressure, which I'm graphing at the bottom. The water temperature, the engine's only at 37 degrees. The fuel temperature is only at 18 degrees, so the engine and the fuel are still relatively cold. I've uh, got a data pit up there for the pressure control valve on the rail just to see if that's having any effect. But that's, at the minute it's sitting pretty stable. Uh, and as you can see, the rail pressure is sitting pretty stable. So we'll get the engine and the fuel temperature up to normal operating temperature. I would expect fuel to go up to somewhere in the region of sort of 30 degrees, 25 to 30 degrees quite cold in here today so it might be difficult um, and see where that fuel pressure goes so it's warmed up now um, just graphing the fuel pressure as you can see it's deviating from about 300 to 350 bar it was actually worse than this when I was using it it was going as low as 270 bar and hitting about 360 bar um, See, I haven't driven it, I've just, I've just warmed it up in the workshop. But still, I would expect that fuel pressure to be a bit more stable than it actually is. So, first of all, I need to prove if what I'm seeing on the scan tool is correct. So, the next thing I'm going to do is hook the scope up to the rail pressure sensor and we'll monitor the signal voltage from that sensor to see how erratic the signal voltage is. That's going to give us a more dynamic reading than the scan tool. What I've done here is I've got the red channel in the end of the rail pressure sensor. So the red channel is measuring the signal voltage feedback. Uh, and the blue channel I've got an amps clamp on a 20 amp range on injector 1. So as you can see, I'll pause the scope now. Just going to knock this off. As you can see, if we zoom in between two injection events, we can see the fuel pressure drop as each injector opens. So, injector one, three, four, two, one. So, we would expect the fuel pressure to drop in the rail when the injector opens, but is it dropping too far? I've got a max main voltage on the rail pressure here, and I'm, I'm between 1.062 volts and 1.19 volts, nearly 150 millivolts difference. Um, it's all I've got to go on at the minute, as I say, this undulating rail pressure. So I'm going to bear with it and I'm going to see if I can do a, a bit of a stress test on the injection system just to make sure that both the fuel pump and the injectors are performing as they should. Yeah, 
with this next test what I've done is I've brought in the green channel on the scope I've got that hooked up to the switch side of the pressure control valve which is on the end of the fuel rail uh, I've proved that because I've got a, a PWM signal there um, I've also disconnected the metering valve on the fuel pump as well reason being is what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground out the pressure control valve which is going to send the fuel pressure up to its maximum the engine will stall but what I should say is the fuel pressure within the rail stays static at all times so it shouldn't really deplete once the engine is stalled this test is, is unique to the Bosch system with piezo injectors it can't be done with um, electromechanical injectors it can't be done on a VDO system it can't be done on a Delphi system it's, it's unique to Bosch um, with a with a piezo injector reason being is when the injector switched off the injector holds pressure so there's the, the, the fuel will not the fuel pressure will not escape out the rail via the back leak or shouldn't escape from the rail via the back leak of the injectors if I see the pressure dropping then I know I've got an issue with an injector right so I've got myself a, a jumper lead here which I'm just going to put in the back of the pressure control valve um, I'm going to put this on a longer time base I'm now going to escalate the revs to about uh, 12 to 1500 rpm this here I'm going to attach it to the ground on the battery what I'll do is it'll drive the pressure control valve closed you'll see the rail pressure in red will rise and it should stay up there once the engine stalls I'm going to take the green channel off and the blue channel off So all we're looking at there now is fuel pressure. So we're ground this now. As predicted, the engine stalled, fuel pressure went high, rise rates very, very quick. So it shows that the pump is in good condition. And what we'll do is I'm going to bring up, bring in a rule and stick it on that rail pressure there move that out the way and we'll see if that rail pressure stays constant you see it should basically it shouldn't deplete it shouldn't ever deplete because the injectors now are held closed let's get you closer to the screen there Each sweep of the screen is 50 seconds. So I think we've had about a couple of minutes so far. And you can see the fuel pressure's not budged. So I'd say if it's not going to budge by now, it ain't going to budge. So I'm going to stop that. And we'll take a look back. As you can see, it's staying static from where it was when I actually shorted out the pressure control valve. Start capturing again. As you can see, it's still high. When I take the ground off the pressure control valve, you should see the fuel pressure drop. 
I'm, I'm sure you heard it there as well. So the fuel pressure's dropped down to its normal level. So what that's proved is that the pump can make pressure, it can make maximum pressure, and the injectors don't have any leak back issues. What we've seen on the screen with the scan tool, with the pressure diving about, is that just the deviation in pressure when the injectors are being triggered? I still think it's a bit excessive. Um, basically, what I witnessed, what we witnessed there, was about 50 bar difference. Um, I witnessed on road tests the other day. I was witnessing about 80 bar difference, which I think is a bit excessive. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually break into the high pressure system, and I'm going to attach a pressure transducer to the fuel rail and then using an, a, a pressure measuring device which is independent to the vehicle we will measure that pressure and see if that pressure that we're seeing on the scope is relative to the pressure that we're actually seeing in the rail. What I'm going to use to uh, measure this pressure is this device here. Um, it's a universal automotive pressure tester. Let's switch it on. It's from a company called Hubby Tools. And it gives me the option of high pressure, high pressure diesel. And it asks me to fit the 2000 bar sensor, which is this one here. So what I'm going to do is using these pipes here, I'm going to tee this in to between the fuel rail and one of the injectors so I can actually get a running pressure measurement from the rail. So let's get that done now. So first of all, I've already removed the injector pipe. So I'm going to put this pipe on the top of the injector. Taking care not to damage the injector. Grab the transducer, connect that there, connect that there, and grab a couple of spanners. Give them a nip, like so. And the transducer's fitted with a, with a pressure relief valve. So that's what this little bottle's for. Just put that down there in case any the fuel goes above 2000 bar. It'll relieve the pressure into the bottle. And then Plug this into the little tablet. That's plugged in there now. So reading zero. So I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that up on there. Okay, I've had to take off the tripod here because the glare off the lights couldn't see the screens. So we've got the transducer connected between the fuel rail and injector two and we're getting a reading of 280-ish bar. We look at the scan tool. 
and we're getting anywhere between 270 and 300 bar fluctuation and we look at the scope so I'll just press play on that and we're getting fluctuations there as well So I would say based on that, the real pressure sensors reading what it should do. As we're now verifying that with a, an external pressure sensor, the reading that we get on here is going to be kind of an averaged value rather than a very dynamic value like we get on the scope you see the scope you see it fluctuating um, and the scan tool again I would say is quite a dynamic value as well so real pressure sensors okay I would say I'm not uh, prepared to change that thinking there's an issue with it so the next thing I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the scope with a pressure transducer and I'm going to connect it onto here which is the, the return lines from the injectors and just make sure that the each injector return rate is equal what I should see is I should see pulses in that line um, as each injector starts to return okay so I've still got the amps clamp on injector one I've got the WPS connected onto the spill pipes so on screen I'll take around there I'll actually get you a bit closer What we have is, we have the fuel rail pressure on the red channel, we've got injector one on the blue channel, and we've got the pulses in the return line from the injectors on the, the gold channel. So what we're looking for here is any anomalies in that pulsation coming through the um, the return line as you can see it does get a bit erratic at some at, at points but then it sorts itself out um, but is that a pointing towards an injector issue is that erratic um, is that erratic part of the trace in the same place so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the time base down a bit it's a more time on the screen and see if we start seeing I'll put a trigger on um, a repeat trigger on channel A and we'll put it over here we'll get a better view there to see if there's a, an anomaly happening in the same place it all looks pretty uh, regular to me what I'm going to do is I'll we'll put some more time back on the screen that the scope catches up if you look at it there I was seeing something being repeated I'll give it a rev now
Colocou. I'm pretty happy this injection system's okay to be fair. Go back to the all kind of equal. So basically it's an intermittent this fault with this car. There's a hunch I had that there might be an issue with the injection system tests I've concluded now is I've proved that the fuel pump rise rate and pressure is good when I grounded the air pressure control valve out um, the fuel pressure went to max pressure within milliseconds um, I've proved that the real pressure sensor is, record is, is actually recording correctly it's reporting the right pressure um, I've proved that on the return side the, the return flow from the injectors is, is kind of equal across all four injectors, so I would give this injection system a clean bill of health. Right, so if this video has proved anything, it proves that how difficult it is to try and find an intermittent fault when you can't replicate the fault. As I say, I had a hunch that it might have been a fuel pressure issue, but as you can see, the tests I've concluded here um, I would say this high pressure fuel system is a okay um, if nothing else you've gotten a video on how to test a high pressure fuel system on a Bosch common rail with piezo injectors um, as I say this one I would say is is fine I'm not I'm not overly concerned about anything I've seen today we've checked the real pressure sensors work and we've checked the plausibility of that real pressure sensor using an, an external um, device to check that pressure. We've checked the injector flow back, the return on the injectors, and it looks to be much of a muchness across all four injectors. We've checked the rail pressure with the scope as well, and we can see that the, the drop in rail pressure is equal for all four injectors. We've checked the rise rate of the pump when, we, when I grounded out the pressure control valve, the rise rate was good, it basically went up to max pressure in, in a matter of milliseconds. It held that pressure for an elongated length of time as well, so proven that the, there's no internal leaking on the, either the pressure control valve on the rail or on the injectors themselves. So, as I say, it's an intermittent. It was a hunch I had that there might have been a fuel pressure issue, but it's come to nothing. So if nothing else, you've getting a a good educational video so thanks for watching tune in for the next one um, and get down in the comments with your questions any concerns any criticisms um, just ask away hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications for more videos thanks for watching